Hi, my name is Kiria Miller, and I'm an intern working for energyshouldbe.org. Today, I'm going to be talking about PurePA's 2030 plan and alternatives to buying more natural gas generation. There is a longer version of this video available with more detail, and the link for it will be in the description. Flat River Power Authority's Board of Directors approved a plan where by 2030, most of their power generation will come from renewable sources. In this talk, I want to answer these questions. What is PRPA's plan for 2030? Why are they proposing buying more natural gas generation? And additionally, they have stated that this is a default option for them and that they are planning on exploring non-fossil fuel alternatives. So what are the non-fossil fuel alternatives that PRPA could explore? I'm going to talk about five possible alternatives. To answer these questions, I'm going to be looking at this model created by Energy Should Be in Excel. And it is modeling PRPA's plan for 2030. To get started, when we rely on high amounts of renewable energy, we need to prepare for dark calms, periods of low sunlight and low wind, which lead to low renewable generation. So we have to rely on natural gas to keep the lights on. PRPA already owns some natural gas generation, but to combat this problem, in their plan, they've proposed buying even more natural gas generation. And we want to know whether that additional natural gas generation is actually necessary. This is a graph of the worst star column in our model to 2030 scenario. And in this graph, the red line is the load. That is the total amount of energy used by all of PRPA's consumers. The green is renewable generation and the yellow is unmet load where we will have to use natural gas. And as you can see, in between these two pink bars, which mark the period of the dark home, there's not enough green renewable generation to meet this red load line. And so this is a graph of the amount of natural gas that we would need to meet the load during this dark calm. Natural gas is dispatched. That essentially means that it can be turned up and down. And as you can see in this graph, the amount of natural gas generation goes up and down depending on how much we need. Natural gas plants also all have maximum capacities, so they can only be turned up so far. This is the natural gas generation that PRP already owns applied to the graph. These yellow peaks are where there's more energy being demanded than that natural gas capacity can meet. PRPA's plan already includes 1200 megawatt hours of battery storage that we can use to meet the yellow peaks. But is that enough? The 1200 megawatt hours of battery storage that PRPA is planning on is not enough to cover all of the biggest yellow peak here. Additionally, our model found one other dark calm where we experienced this problem. So this is why PRPI has suggested buying more natural gas generation because we can't quite meet the load right here. PRPI's default solution of more natural gas generation would cost $140 million up front. Our question is what else can we buy for $140 million for a twice a year problem? One alternative is buying enough battery storage so that we could entirely cover the biggest yellow peak. If PRPA added 800 megawatt hours of storage for a total of 2000 megawatt hours, they could completely cover this worst dark calm. According to price predictions from Enrol's annual technology baseline, new batteries would cost a similar amount to a new natural gas plant. And batteries can be used year round. They would decrease our reliance on the natural gas that we already have, and they would not produce more carbon emissions. Another alternative is demand management, and that means lowering the load. One way of doing this is that during dark comms, PRPA can reduce the voltage of the power that they send out to consumers. That way we use less energy. Another way is that PRPA can have people operate at off peak times so we don't use as much energy all at once or have people operate when there's more renewable generation available so we specifically don't use as much natural gas. And we call that time of renewables. We reduce our load only 5%, we take our dark calm from looking like this to this, where the yellow peak is now only 1200 megawatt hours, which is the size of the battery that PRPA is planning on. Another alternative is deliberate hydro dispatch. 20% of PRPA's electricity comes from hydropower, and a lot of that electricity comes from Glen Canyon Dam. Like natural gas, hydropower can be dispatched. Dam operators can let more water or less water flow through to turn the turbines that create the hydropower electricity. Right now, hydropower is dispatched to follow the load. 
That means more power is being generated when we use more energy and less when we use less. However, because we can control hydropower more than we can control other forms of renewable energy, we could instead use hydropower to balance out our other renewables. So when we have less wind and solar generation, we could use more hydropower. That way we don't have to use as much natural gas. If we change our hydro dispatch from following our load to following our dark comms, we change our dark comm from looking like this to this, where now we can cover it using the 1200 megawatt hour battery. Another alternative is that PRPA will join the Western Energy Imbalance Market in 2022. And in this market, they will be able to buy energy from other power authorities during dark homes when we don't have enough energy ourselves. One more option is electric vehicle to grid charging. Colorado is planning on having 940,000 electric vehicles within its borders by 2030. And according to population data, we can therefore estimate that PRPA will have around 60,000 electric vehicles. Each of these cars have battery capacities of around 100 kilowatt hours. And with 60,000 cars, that's 6,000 megawatt hours of storage. To take advantage of this, PRPA can incentivize customers to discharge some of that battery capacity back to the grid during dark comms. To sum up, PRPA is planning on exploring non-fossil fuel solutions to dark comms. There are multiple non-fossil fuel solutions available, like more battery storage, demand management, the Western energy imbalance market, dispatching hydropower differently, and electric vehicle to grid charging. With all of these options available, we don't have to resort to the default natural gas. We could spend $140 million on new fossil fuel generation that would only be used a few times a year, or we could spend that money on other solutions. Again, there's a longer version of this available if you're curious to see more detail, and that link will be in the description. Thank you.